Hello, my name is Daryl Robert Schoon, and I'd like to welcome you to, what, to the, this program of Steps Beyond Time. And this one, I've been looking forward to, because I know it's going to be something different. In fact, I was going to ask uh, Reverend Betty Tadaleski just what it was going to be, and I decided to hold that question in advance and find out for myself. Well, hello, friends. Good to be with you again. Looking forward to seeing you at the temple, if you ever have the notion to come. Meet some of the people that we talk about. This, you know... I want to talk about this man right here, actually, for a moment, yes. just for a moment. <clears throat> His, uh, he calls himself Gold Star in this particular uh, rendition, this painting. He's called Gold Star. Now, I might as well just start out because you <laughs> will expect it, you know, and curl his hair a bit. This is the man that I met <clears throat> when I was lying out at the swimming pool. I had been to work. I had a half hour before I went go to class, okay? This was um, 1980. You know, there was so much uh, uh, of the wonderful spirit of, of what people called UFOs. They're not UFOs to me. <clears throat> That says they're unidentified. <laughs> well, to me. me, they're not unidentified. I know who they are, are exactly. So, but it was how I met him. I was lying on my lounge chair and this gold sphere. Now, I called it a frisbee, a gold frisbee, because that's what it looked like, just about 20 feet over my lounge chair. Immediately, I knew it was a person, <clears throat> don't know how I knew, but I did, and started communicating with him, okay? My sister, Reverend Nora Allen, walked out, saw me talking, you know, this is, psychically. This is a great family. With this, yeah. <laughs> with this golden sphere, and she says, oh, your UFO is really beautiful and then as he showed me the inside of a ship that was not there and all the crystals inside and how it worked and then uh, he started moving away so we followed him to the end <clears throat> to the end of the block because we couldn't go any farther than that and and then he just simply disappeared he didn't fly in he didn't fly out well I ran in and I, what did Reverend Norris, what did your sister see? What did she see? She, she saw the sphere. The sphere, okay. She saw the, the sphere. sphere yeah. And she says to me, what did he say? Okay. She knew it was someone too. She, yeah. You know, more psychic than I. Yeah. And uh, so I thought, well, see, I knew why it was there. I knew why, because I said that morning in our paper, the Daily Star, there was an article about three inches square in the center of that page, of the editorial page, and it was written by one of these syndicated columnists that okay. everybody knew, okay? And he says, there's a UFO in my backyard. He said, now, I don't believe in UFOs, uh, and but there's one in my backyard. He said, I went up second floor, third floor, I'm looking, and it's hanging there, okay? And he wrote that and put it in there. I cut that article out that day because I said, my God, this is true. Isn't it interesting that a nationally syndicated columnist, a voice with a face, can write the truth in the middle of the editorial page across the country? He can get away with it. If I called up and said, hey, you know, there's a UFO in my backyard, it would, have been, yeah. it would have been very stupid of me and very foolish, and I wouldn't do that. And I haven't done that in these uh, 33 years, okay? That would be foolish for me to do it. But I ran in. Now, what would you do if you've been talking to a gold, what you call, looks like a Frisbee, okay? Well... What I did 
as I ran in, got on the phone, and called Reverend Rita Selman and Dr. Lloyd Selman. Okay. And I said, Rita, I've been talking to a UFO in the, the shape of a gold sphere. She says, oh, Betty, that's now, exciting. Now, tell them, why did you call Reverend Rita Selman? Because I'm going to tell you about Reverend Rita Selman because I just talked to her. She's in spirit. You talked to her, I talked to her. last Friday night, right. the night bef Friday That's night right. before, and uh, she's my dear, dear friend, great uh, spiritualist medium for many, many years, and a spokesperson for the Ashtar Command. Now, when you called her up that day, she of course she wasn't in spirit. She was no, still on this plane. She, yeah. yeah, you're like my granddaughter who will say, "Now, is this one of those?" Uh, people you can't see, see? <laughs> you know, one of your friends you can't see, but she's got them too. My okay. granddaughter is very psychic, and she, she has a lot of friends in spirit too. But anyway, I call Rita. I said, but this was not a spaceship. It didn't come in. I've seen yeah, yeah. spaceships. So, yeah. It didn't have any form. It looked like a gold frisbee. And But I knew okay. that it was a person. Okay. And she said, oh, Betty, that was what our channeling was this morning. She said, here, let me read it to you. Because they're going to be coming in in different phases without the ship. Okay? And so... Uh, this is exciting. I said, well, she says, uh, what are you doing tomorrow night? She says, I, I said, well, we hold in our Course in Miracles tonight, tomorrow night, that Thursday night. So come on over and, uh, and, and do some channeling and with the Ashtar Command. I didn't know he was with the Ashtar Command at that time, you know, but I knew that she, oh, yes, so she came over. It was so interesting that next day you know i had invited people to my to the course in miracles that tommy tompkins and mm -hmm. i were facilitating and and did for eight years and, and you know oh well thank you no da 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 we had a lovely large group uh, but uh, there was one man at the um at hughes it was hughes at that time and uh, uh my friend, Reverend Sandy Morgan, one of my ministers, worked there, and she had invited him to our Course in Miracles, and, and of course, he didn't. There were about three men at the company that I knew that had been invited, and da-da-da-da. Never expected them. That it day, should be. This is Hughes Aircraft. That yes. day, okay? She should know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they came up to me and said, you still do that Course in Miracles uh -huh. thing? Yeah. They all showed up. All right. Only time never came back. But <laughs> Sandy called me at work and says, Betty, guess who's coming to Course in Miracles tomorrow night? I had the paper in front of me, and there was a picture here in Parade magazine, and I was looking at it, and I said his name. She says, why do you know that? Why did you say that? You never met this person. Yeah. I said, because I'm looking at his picture, and Spirit said he's going to be at the Course in Miracles tomorrow night. Okay. Anyway, yeah. he did. Um, and you know what? I found out this man had written an encyclopedia on UFOs. Oh, really? Never saw one. Okay. Never, had never okay. seen one. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, this, this was a, a wonderful experience. But Reverend Rita Selman, I met in 79 at the time that I walked into that spiritualist church and found out about mystical, magical mind, okay? And that there are no accidents, no coincidences, and that everything is according to law, okay? Cosmic law. Learn the law like you have to learn a language here, learn the law, and then listen. So, Reverend Rita Selman, at that time in 79, had been channeling the Ashtar Command for years, okay? But I wasn't interested in it. I was still trying to find out how, what clairvoyance was and how you could see into other realms. I was just trying to figure that out. And here's this beautiful soul, Rita Selman, who is traveling around the California 
uh, and all the East Coast, uh, the West Coast, uh, talking about the command and and she'd been doing it for years, along with her wonderful husband, Dr. Lloyd Selman. So, so she was the point person for she, the. She was a. She was the spokesperson for, for the this, Ashtar Command for this sector. Okay. This there were sectors all there are sectors all around the world. Okay. okay? She had this one. Okay. okay. And I wasn't interested because I thought I and I knew. Spirit said, every word she says is true. true yeah. I knew it, but, but I'm still trying to see something. That's right. This is a little too out yeah, there for you. This is out uh, for Way me. out but at the time. I'm still going to classes and meditating and yeah. trying to see into this invisible world, world that other yeah. folks are, are, are having are talking about. Yeah, they're about seeing, yeah. What they're seeing. Now, I want to point out the thing. That when she talks about the Ashtar Command, um, it's a term associated when you know certain people with UFO, with, with what they call UFOs. But the truth of the matter is, in a metaphysical spiritual sense, the Ashtar Command is the name of a hierarchy that are overlooking the changes on our planet at this time. The Ashtar Command is a name they have given themselves, and they describe themselves as a collective consciousness of beings whose responsibility is to sort of shepherd the earth through this very intense transition period that we're going through. Excellent. That's exactly what they're doing, the spiritual hierarchy. And so this is, so you're talking to Rita Selman, who is, and, and this is 20, 30 years ago. 33 years and ago. Almost nobody knows this is, concept is very esoteric. And here is this person going around speaking to it, speaking and oh. talking about this phenomenon then. Around the world. Around the okay. world. And, uh, and I was not interested at that time. Timing is everything. But I got interested. <laughs> and um, so one of my ministers, one of my students, Reverend Carolyn Larrabee, uh, when we went to camp uh, her first time to camp, and I took students there for 25 years, they said to her, now, we know you're busy and we do this and this and this, and you know how incredible she is, but your purpose on the earth is to be an artist. An artist, she's never drawn anything like me, stick figures, okay? But they said, you've come to be an artist for spirit. She goes home, gets all the art stuff, sits down and paints. I said, do you see it out here? I don't see anything, she said. I just paint. So actually, she is an automatic artist, okay. like Stanley, Stanley Matrunic. Okay. Her hand does the art without her eyes. Okay? Without her thinking about without it. Without her thinking about yeah. it. So when we came back from camp every Thursday night, she uh, shows up at the meditation with a different portrait. This was in August. Every Thursday night until Christmas, she has brought a painting of someone. The, pe the person that she painted would come in through the channel, through the channeling, say, yes, Carolyn, I'm so-and-so. Give my portrait to so-and-so. To and she would. This went on from August to Christmas. Christmas time came. She walked into my meditation with this painting. And uh, I said, oh, who is the uh, Ashtar commander? She says, what is Ashtar? I've never heard of it. Okay. Now, the reason I've got two is these are, uh, one is an original, the other is a copy. Because... And one Sunday in the church, Spirit said to me, give your Ashtar commander to one of the men out there. I said, well, I, to myself, I will after I have it copied tomorrow. I'll give him a copy, okay? He's not getting the original. <laughs> but, sorry about that. So he comes in, starts speaking, I'm Gold Star. I said, are you that gold? Um, hmm, hmm. When, now, you, you were at the temple, and you heard, you were told to go and, and, and give this picture to somebody. 
Then she the voice told, came in. Okay. She was told to give it to, to you. All right. She okay. That's the first time. time. Okay. It's the first time that he di that one didn't c tell her who uh, come in and say. Okay. He says, "This I am Commander um, Gold Star with the Ashtar Command, and and I know, and that's not his name." Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I said, "Are you that Gold uh, Sphere?" He said, "Yes, I am." Okay. So this so this is. You're get, now this is you're getting confirmation. She comes in with this picture and but you know, you know that it is from the Ashtar I command. Said, you she, knew she says I've never heard of the Ashtar command. She had no idea. She said, I don't yeah. know who it is. Okay. And I said, Well it's a uh, but I've never seen a commander with a gold okay. because I the see picture, him yeah. with, with bl only blue and silver. Yeah. It's the first one I'd seen. But when I saw the gold hat, I and but, he says I'm gold star. So uh, I'm going to speak a little la different language here right now. He's a Kumara. Oh, okay. You know, Sanat okay. Kumara is called the Ancient of Days, the Lord of the World, is the sponsor of the Temple of Universality. You can look it up in the Bible. He was with Daniel when he was in the lion's den. There are references to the priesthood of Melchizedek, or Melchizedek means high, high, magician, high priest, okay? But the Ancient of Days is mentioned. The Lord of the World, Sanat Kumara. And all of this new, we call new, world consciousness actually started when Saint Germain appeared to this gentleman um, at Mount Shasta in 1931. This, uh, and it began the bridge to freedom, or the I am movement. Now, all of you have heard that I am that I am. You've heard it in the Omen, as we chant Tat Sarom, Om Tat Sarom, I am that. So it's an ancient, ancient mantra, okay? I want to tell you how... Rita Selman got her commission, as it were, from the Ashtar Command to be a channel for them. Okay? This beautiful couple, Lloyd and Rita, had an only child. She was five, or half, five and a half or six. She was in first grade at school. It was the year that they had the there was, had been a lot of polio here in the country, and now we had the liquid instead of the shot. And so at her school, they had the sugar cube, and they put the polio vaccine on it. And like the other children, she took hers, and she was dead the next morning. Of course, you can almost imagine the, their, their feeling, almost. Years later, and Rita has been this beautiful channel for, for a long time, a beautiful medium, but um, one day at lunch, they're sitting at their kitchen table, surrounded by windows, overlooking a, glass, a, a grassy knoll in a lovely community in California. And they're sitting there, and they're, in their sight they could see a rock, a large rock that sits there. It was very beautiful and decorous. There was a little girl sitting on it. Now, there were no children in the neighborhood. And she just sat there, and they're, they're right in front of this large window, and they're looking at the little girl. Well, she is so cute. Rita says, Lloyd, look at that little girl. See that dress she's got on? 
that dress is just like the one our daughter was buried in and she said I knew you know it was so rare for people to have their grandchildren and children out there and she just wanted to see her so she goes out and Lloyd ch follows her she heads toward the rock <clears throat> she gets about 10 feet away and she sees that it's her daughter and um, she goes well we cannot imagine how she felt there's no way you could even imagine such a thing but she is so stunned and when she comes out of it she tries to get there is a a um, invisible barrier that will not let her in 10 feet of the little girl the little girl says yes mommy this is so and so and I've come on a mission t to tell you something you hold a commission I am a commander I love it I am a commander with the Ashtar command the UFOs and I have they have sent me here to tell you that you signed a contract a long time ago to be one of the carriers one of the speakers one of the channels for the Ashtar command the Ashtar command being the hierarchy the highest hierarchy um, in this system of worlds okay Rita says <laughs> they had a long conversation and then her daughter simply disappeared out of her. and uh, that was her intro to the Ashtar command and of course then they started channeling and so she was one of the early early voices for the intergalactic confederation called the Ashtar Command Gold Star is one of the three we would say he we call him a commander he's actually talked about in uh, Helena Blavatsky's book the secret doctrine if you go to page 89 of the gold of the uh, secret doctrine and they will talk about Sanat Kumara whom we call the Ancient of Days the Lord of the World in the Bible they will talk about that and the six who came with him one is Lord Sananda whom we know as Jesus the Christ uh, who is in charge of all religion on the planet there is another who is in charge of all government situations and there is one more for anything that doesn't fit in I guess there are three I have never been told the name of the third one but at one time I was sitting at Camp Chesterfield and uh, I had talked to all my teachers, spirit teachers, advisors, including the band who works with me. I the first one person I met in spirit actually was Lord Sananda. He he was called Shooting Star. Many of the people here in Tucson uh, have talked to. Sananda, a shooting star. I didn't know that shooting stars were people, but that was how I met him. That is part of the story. Part of, part of this amazing story. There's more. A lot more. A lot more. Reverend Betty Tataleski, Temple of Universality, Tucson, Arizona. Thank you. And thank you, Dad. <laughs> More, more, I know.